Hello, it's me again, Dr. Babatunde Okewale. Today we'll be talking about understanding semen analysis result. The reason why I want to talk about this today is I have a lot of clients that send me their semen report from abroad. They send it through the WhatsApp, through my email, and they want to know the interpretation of this result. So we'll be talking about that today. Before I go on to talking about semen analysis, there are certain things that must be done before you go in for your semen analysis or before you produce your semen. The number one thing is you must abstain for two to three days before you produce the semen. And the production preferably should be by masturbation. Condom collection, especially the normal condoms that is used, is not allowed. The reason is there are a lot of spermicides inside the condom that could kill off the sperm. And finally, the sperm that has been produced in a sterile clean bottle or, or um, specimen bottle that has been given to you should be delivered in the lab within one hour. Don't put it in ice block. Just put it in your pocket at room temperature and take straight to the lab. Now, what does a normal semen analysis result look like? There are five or six things that we look for in a normal semen when it is produced. And I'll give you what those five or six things are. The first thing we look for is the volume of the semen. The normal volume should be between two to five mils. The second thing we look for is the count. The normal semen count should be 20 million to 200 million per mil. Anything within that range is normal. The third thing we look for is the motility of the sperm. At least 50% of the sperm must be progressively motile. The fourth thing is the morphology. Morphology means shape. At least 70% of the sperm must be of normal forms and shape. The fifth thing we look for is the white cell count inside the semen. White cell count is a reflection of whether there is infection inside the semen or not. Anything less than 1 million per mil white cell count, we discount it, it doesn't matter. Anything above 1 million suggests that there might be infection in the semen. And finally, we look for what we call liquefaction. When a sperm is produced, it is thick and gelatinous. But you expect within 30 minutes that that sperm that is thick and gelatinous should have liquefied. It should become liquid. So within 30 minutes, that should happen. So that's the normal result. Now, if we look at all those parameters that I've spoken about, when you take a semen analysis result, you start looking at it, then you start analyzing it. The first thing, let's go to the first thing, the volume. We've already said the volume should be between two to five mils. What if the volume is low, is less than two? What if the volume is one mil? What could be the possible causes? That's what we'll be thinking about. It could be due to one, that the man was under high stress during the production, such that he's so afraid that he couldn't ejaculate properly. It could be due to spillage during the collection process. That's another cause. It could be due to retrograde ejaculation. That is, some of the sperm, instead of coming forward, went backward into the bladder. We know the causes of those things, and we will discuss that later. It could be abnormality of the prostate. 
and the seminal vesicle. Don't forget, some fluid are added to the sperm in the prostate and the seminal vesicle. So if there's abnormality there, then the volume will be low. We've talked about low volume. What about high volume? What about a man who is producing a sperm volume of 10 mils? That's too high. What could be responsible for that? Most of the time, the causes of high volume sperm is inflammation in the reproductive tract. It could be in the prostate, it could be in the terminal vesicle, or in the testes itself. So that's about the volume. What about the count? Because the count is one of the most important parameters. If you have a low sperm count, basically what it means is the count is less than 20 million. We've already established that the normal sperm count is between 20 million to 200 million. So low sperm count is called oligospermia. What about no sperm? Because you can have a low sperm count or you can have no sperm at all. We call that isospermia. But let's talk about low sperm count. What could be responsible? It could be due to infection. It could be due to all the causes of male infertility. Ranging from infection, varicocele, maybe you have some medications, excessive alcohol intake, it could be due to excessive smoking, etc. Those are possible causes of low sperm count. What about no sperm count? Isospermia. Isospermia could be due again to two things. Either the passageway from where the sperm is supposed to come from is blocked. They call it testicular blockage or blockage in the testicular area. It could be in the epididymis or it could be in the um, seminal vesicle or any other passageway where the sperm is supposed to come from. That's one. It could be due to blockage. The second reason for azospermia or no sperm count is testicular failure. Maybe the testis is not even working. There are ways of detecting which is which because the treatment options are totally different. Now let's go on to morphology, which is the fourth parameter. Morphology basically means shape. A normal sperm count shape should be like this. A sperm has a head, it has a body, and it has a tail. If you've seen the picture of a tadpole before, that's how a sperm looks. When you look at it under the microscope, it has a head, it has a body, and it has a tail, and it's always moving. There are some sperms that have abnormal shape. They could have two heads, they could have two tails, they could have two bodies. Those are abnormal morphology or abnormal sperm cells. The word we use for them is teratozoospermia, which means poor morphology. The important thing is at least 70% of sperm should have normal forms. The fifth thing is the white cell count that I talked to you about earlier. Anything above 1 million white cell count that you can see in the sperm per mil suggests so there's infection. We call that leukocytosemia, that is leukocyte, which is white cell count, in the sperm. So you need to send that sperm for microscopy, culture, and sensitivity to try and find out which bacteria is in there. And once you get the bacteria that is in there, it should be appropriately treated. Finally, the sixth thing is the liquefaction. Like I mentioned earlier on, most sperm within 30 minutes must become fluid. And if it does not liquefy within 30 minutes, then it means there are some problems in the prostate or in the seminal vesicle or in the bulbo urethral glands. I'll quickly talk a little bit more about that liquefaction because I found a lot of couples that, or women that phone me and say, oh, whenever we make love, the sperm comes back out after some time again. That is liquefaction in action. When the sperm is produced, it is thick, gelatinous, and it is deposited in the vagina. That's the liquid that is carrying 
the sperm cell. The sperm cells themselves, you cannot see with your naked eye. You see them only under the microscope. They swim. So immediately, the semen is deposited in the vagina. The sperm cell swims away. They swim inside the cervix, go inside the womb, looking for eggs to fertilize. What is left behind is the seminal fluid and it must liquefy within 30 minutes. So don't be too worried. Um, if after some time, after making love, you start seeing fluid coming out um, of the vagina. Now, I've mentioned all these things, the parameters, etc. I must put a caveat here. It does not mean that pregnancy cannot occur. If any of these figures I've given you are not totally within the range, pregnancy can still occur. But we would prefer that your semen analysis is normal. For example, let me pick on the um, count because that's one of the most important parameters, the sperm count. We've already established that a normal sperm count should be between 20 million and 200 million. Let us assume a man comes to me and says my spam count is 30 million and there's nothing wrong with my wife. How long will it take us to get pregnant? I can confidently tell them that if you keep trying, having regular unprotected intercourse, there's chances that you'll get pregnant within one year is very high. So I'll give them one year. But let us assume that another man comes to me and says my sperm count is 20 million and there's nothing wrong with my wife. The statistics tells me that they will get pregnant if they're having regular unprotected intercourse within three years. If a man comes to me and says my sperm count is 10 million and there's nothing wrong with my wife, how long do you think it might take us? Again, if they're having regular unprotected intercourse, I'll tell the person that the statistics tells me it will happen when I take six years. And if the count is one million, it might take 12 years. So you will see straight away that the lower the count, the more difficult it is to achieve pregnancy. Not that pregnancy cannot happen. So I hope you've learned a little bit about understanding what the semen analysis result is all about. If you want to know more about it, I've written two books, and both books are available on Amazon. The first of them is called How to Get Pregnant and Have a Baby. It's available on Amazon. The second is called The Art of Making Babies. It's a patient guide to in vitro fertilization. Both are also available in Nigeria on all our social media pages. You can order them. Um, you can contact us on our website www.stivesheathcare.com Thank you for listening. Please kindly subscribe, like, and share this video. God bless.